Welcome to our Basics of Writing Personal Statements and College Essays webinar. This is part of the Medica Zone's newest series, So You Want to Attend College, What's Next? Today, we're going to be covering the infamous personal statement that a lot of college applications request and going over how to complete your college essays and college supplementals. Okay. And up first, we're gonna do introductions and we're just gonna go in order of our pictures. So my name is Jay Narman. I'm a rising sophomore at the University of Southern California studying law, history, and culture with a minor in volunteerism and philanthropy. Um, some of the things I'm involved in around campus is the Los Angeles Community Impact. I'm in some pre-law societies and BSA, Black Student Association, as well as just um, like other campus groups. When applying for colleges, I got into some of like the top colleges around the country with um, full rides due to um, having the Gates Scholarship, um, a few other scholarships. So I'm pretty like well-versed when it comes to writing essays. I had to write so many of them, but yeah, that's me. All right, hi, I'm Christian Howes. I'm a rising sophomore at NYU, New York University. And a few things I'm involved in around campus as well to go off of Jaden's response. Um, I'm also part of my school's like Black Student Alliance. It's called the BSU for NYU. And then I'm also a part of the Academic Achievement Program, which is for um, all students of color. And then also um, FYQA, which is First Years Careers and Allies. And then I'm a part of, well, I attend Marketing Society and some other business clubs, but um, I'm also studying business and journalism and then a minor in the business of entertainment, media, and technology. And that's me. Hi, my name is Natasha, but everybody calls me Nat. I am a senior in my final and last year of college. I am a biological science major concentration in pre-medicine and a sociology major with a double minor in forensics and psychology. I was, um, I held some positions as a high schooler that developed me into, uh, into college. I was a Jack and Jill member. I was a regional team board chairholder and I also was a Orange County president chapter in high school as well as that made into I was a NAACP educational and outreach chair board member. I also was a um, African American Association ambassador on behalf of LSU. I also was a Black Student Union holder and I am part of a foundation called The Collective that shows Black women and Black men how to take care of their natural hair and to organize their society through one of their looks of natural statements. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So as you can see, we have a great panel of speakers here today. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get into the contents of today's webinar. Um, so up first, we're going to just kind of talk about the elements of an essay, do a little introduction to what is a personal statement, what is a college supplemental, then we're going to talk a little bit about brainstorming, how to come up with ideas for your essays, then we're going to get into the crafting of making a perfect essay, and last, we're going to have a breakout room activity where you'll have the opportunity to work with one of us one-on-one -on -one to start working on your own personal statements and college essays. So up first, elements of an essay, and I'll pass this to Christian. Oh, we, you're muted. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> um, so what is a personal statement? A personal statement is like an essay where you demonstrate aspects of who you are and yourself just by sharing some of the qualities, skills, and values you will bring to college. And then um, the meta. It's kind of like the metaphorical heart of the college application. It's kind of where they actually get to see you and like hear you, literally. Uh oh. And then, um, so it's just really meant to capture the essence of who you are as a person and what motivates you, and uh, in the place of where certain parts of your application cannot do that. And then, compared to a traditional essay, it's just like a classic five paragraph essay that you might write for like an English class or any type of class. And then um, that's just, that kind of follows the similar format of like writing a thesis and then kind of explaining that throughout the body paragraphs. And then some of the rules of um, traditional essays, you can't really have any I statements. There isn't really meant to be any vulnerability necessarily. You're not supposed to really involve yourself in your writing. 
And they're kind of just designed to help you understand how a student thinks. So with a personal statement, you can kind of do all of those things. You are really meant to. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So kind of following up, the structure of a personal statement is usually you have your antidote, your story, and growth. So an antidote is usually like a short account of something that's happened to you, whether like in your life, you might be sharing like a memory, you might be sharing a challenge or setback, and you're just kind of giving like a short account of what happens. Your story is framing a narrative around that statement. For example, if your antidote is, oh, I used to be a cheerleader, I fell, and I ended up like tearing my ACL. That could be your antidote. And then the story around it is you talk about how you overcame this, what struggles resulted from this. And then the growth is kind of tying it all together because overall the colleges want to see not only are you a person who has real life struggles, but you're able to conquer those struggles in various ways. And then Nat, if you want to take this one. <clears throat> yeah, what are supplemental essays? Supplemental essays are additional pieces of writing required by many universities, and they can be just as revealing and important as your personal statement. Um, <clears throat> examples, why us, why this major, learning from obstacles. I find as I might, and how, I find as in supplemental essays, this is kind of where you can spin the, priorities that the college pursues in their students towards what you have as a person like for what in the world happened to my sorry I don't know what that was um for example it's the um for LSU art our motto is live gold love purple meaning that regardless of when you leave the campus you will always understand and have the southern feel and southern charm and as like southern people they feel themselves on gentlemanness, kindness, respect, and honor. That's kind of where you can develop it as why else you can be like, well, I was born in California and my mom was Southern. So she showed me this and the Southern Roots is tying that college to you and what they believe in. And also this is something as when it's some supplemental, you want to give it short and sweet, but to the point, meaning you want to have depth in it, but not to the point where you're telling your whole personal story. Um, it also is quick, and I will say, I know the other panelists, you can get lost in an essay if you're talking about your struggles too much, you'll be writing the next thing you know, you got a 500 word essay, and that's not necessarily want you, what you want, you want around 250 words max on this, because as I said, like, they're reading thousands upon thousands upon thousands of essays, so if I'm reading something and it's 500 words for something that's supposed to be 200, most likely that reader that's looking over it will just skim through it, and you, that's not what you want when you're applying to a college. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so kind of going back to personal statements, a little intro to personal statements is overall, they should be able to showcase to the um, admissions officers about who you are, what fulfills you, what motivates you, what excites you. And these things can look like humor, beauty, community, autonomy. Um, they want to see like who you are in relation to everything else that happens in your life. You know, you're more than just a club. You're more than just your parents. You're more than just things that have happened to you. So in your personal statement, you want to showcase about four to five different values. And that can look like hard work, perseverance, optimism, creativity, anything that just kind of gives them a good overview as to who you are as a person. But here are some do's and don'ts when it comes to your personal statement. Number one, don't be afraid to be vulnerable and express emotion. If you have a story, if you have something that has happened to you that definitely changed the way that you think, the way that you live your life, don't be afraid to talk to your college admissions officers about that. But also, you don't want to just trauma dump on them. Like, you don't want to just go like, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, because then it's kind of like, oh, am I like, accepting you into my college or am I feeling bad for you and it's not what you want your admission officer to think also don't feel the need to discuss topics that you might feel uncomfortable with you know not everyone is ready to talk and write an essay about challenging things that have happened to them in their lives and no one is expecting you to there's been plenty of personal statements that talked about 
incidences that weren't necessarily painful or har like harmful, but were maybe just positive things that changed the way that you viewed life. Be careful not to drag your story on. You know, there is a limit. I believe it's like 650, like 500 to 650 or 750. And so that's not a lot of words. Like when you really think about that, that, oh, not, oh, sorry. Oh, nothing. I was just saying um, for out-of-state students, it's going to be, for at least me, out-of-state students that are in the South require 800 word, or a maximum of 800 words in the, um, if you are a UC, if you're applying to any of the UC schools, it's a max hundred of fifth, excuse me, it's a max of 500 words and it's for everything. So for the UCs, you fill out one application, it's 500 words and make sure like when it goes like that, because I know for like USC, UCLA, UCLA might be a UC school, but it's a private like higher education school but for like UCI UC um, San Bernardino like all all of those schools you are going to have the same essay for all of those schools that you apply to so please really make sure you're answering them thoroughly and sorry to interrupt you but that last thing I was going to add is try and give them yeah hey I went through this but I overcame it because the last thing you're going to want to show a college is yeah I struggled and I sat in that struggle yeah. um for me I think I believe my one of my personal statements I had was um I was adopted and constantly having to question like where I came from let me let led me to connect with other people in foster care systems and like that. So it's taking a negative and turning it to a positive, because if you can't turn that bad thing into a positive, please do not write that on your essay statements, because these people that are going to be looking it over are going to think, hey, you're not resilient in overcoming those traumas. Sorry, go ahead. But yeah, definitely. So, you know, going definitely you want to showcase growth, like you just don't want to say that this bad thing happened and nothing came from it, you know, um, being clear and concise. Like I said, you have a limited amount of words, so you want to make sure that everything you're saying is a sentence that adds something to your story. You don't want to have a bunch of sentences that are just kind of like filler because you're trying to fill up space. Like you'll need all those words. Trust me, you're going to need all those words. And then just be truthful and authentic. If you're lying about something, it's pretty easy to tell. Like if you're trying to compete with the sad whole story, like, oh, something happened to me that didn't really happen. They're going to be able to tell because you're just not going to have the authentic feel of someone who really went through that. And you never know, your, your admission officer might be a person who went through that. And they might even ask you in your interview, hey, when I was reading this, I saw that this and this happened. And you're going to be face to face with them like, oh. I don't know like that didn't actually happen and that looks really bad so don't lie always be very truthful and authentic and then um Christian if you want to take this one yeah so we kind of mentioned this a little in the last slide but um just for some really important points to consider on a personal statement is to kind of follow a narrative in some of the like examples we have you'll see that but kind of just creating a story that kind of leads to like Think of, um, I think it's like the plot thing where it's like the introduction, the rising action, the climax, and then kind of like a resolution. The resolution is really, really important. So like, just make sure there's kind of continuity within your, um, if you do decide to go with like a more negative aspect of your life that you overcame, make sure there's the now, the present, how you're doing now and how they can help you in the future. And then also to think about the presentation, how you present the information. Is it coming off too harsh or brash? I know like with some people who kind of have written on racism before, it's always just um kind of debate, like um, is certain language allowed to be used? So just think about that for yourself. It's always a personal decision, but just think about how you're presenting the information and how the admissions officer may perceive it or how you're coming off, because you could come off in a negative way. The conciseness, don't, you just mentioned this in the last slide, but um, make sure you're not going overboard with what you're telling. Make sure all the information and sentences are kind of important to the um, integrity of the story. And then like growth. It's really, really, really important to show growth at the end of your um, essay. That's kind of what they're really looking for. And it's the best way to show kind of um, maybe one of the traits that you view the best about yourself. So it's really important to show growth. Mm -hmm. Definitely. 
Um, so next, we're going to get into how do you write a quality essay? What does a quality essay look like? How do you start to even think about what you're going to write and kind of all the things that go into that? Um, so some of the recommendations that we have is number one, plan. Outline your essay before you write. Like it's rare that you can just open up a document and write an entire two page essay. That's very rare. Usually you have to think about all the things you want to include, things that you might need, things that you want to hit on, and then you start writing. Then you want to come up with your antidote. What is this story trying to tell you? Like, what do you want the admissions officers to know about you from reading this statement or this essay? Focus. Stick to the relevant information. Don't go on a tangent. You want to talk about this, then stay on that. You don't want to talk about this, 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 and that, because oftentimes you're not going to be able to cover all of those topics in the short amount of time and the short amount of space that you have. Your structure, use paragraph breaks and use spaces for structure, you know, like it's rarely good to have one big block of just text and it doesn't have any form or structure to it. And also just once again, make sure you're using clear, concise sentences. I remember someone told me when I was writing my personal statement that imagine the person who's reading this has maybe like an eighth grade vocabulary. Like you wanna write something that isn't using like big words for no reason. Like you don't wanna write an essay and it's like, I was superstitious of superficial, like crazy things. And they're like, okay, like <laughs> what are you trying to say, you know? And then always remember to proofread, like proofread, proofread. Have it edited by other people. Have your friends read it. Have your mom read it. Read it out loud to yourself. Read it out loud to other people. Because oftentimes when you're reading out loud, that's when you can find a lot of the issues that you have in your writing. And then you can go back and change the way that things sound, the way they're spelled and et cetera. Because it does matter at the end. You know, Even if it's a great statement, but you have a little too many misspellings, a little too many grammar areas, it can make it look bad. And Nat, if you want to talk a little bit about brainstorming. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, 100%. Um, brainstorming, what is the main value of the essay? Um, I am persevering and determined and, and a determined individual. I'm optimistic and unbreakable in my faith. What, what examples can you provide? I overcame blank by blank. Blank happened and changed my life by blank. How does this contribute? contribute to your application by overcoming this obstacle I became blank with renewed faith I'm an advocate for blank um I actually am glad that I got this slide um brainstorming what I did for mine is I looked up past questions that the UC schools CSU schools and outside state outside of my state colleges looked at because one thing is they often tend to reuse their questions over the years and if you can be like, oh, they use this in 2019, most likely it's 2025 or 20, dang, that makes me feel old, 2025 or 2026 that you guys are applying to colleges, the most likely are going to repeat those. So writing them down um, and also brainstorming is a good thing. And how can I not ramble? Rambling, I think is for me, the worst thing I can do because I'll start writing and I'll have so much to say, but then I realize there's so much I am fluffing up. And also brainstorming helps you in acclimating yourself to writing to a higher standard. In college, you cannot write to the same standard as you do in high school. You have to make sure you're not misspelling anything. Make sure you're not text talking because I'm going to tell you it is very, very looked on highly bad. It's a highly looked on. It's badly looked on on resumes and stuff like that if you guys have text talk. So that's also like writing it down before you send it or making some making sure that you're speaking as you're writing because that's what helped me is making sure that I wrote how I spoke. So as I was speaking, I was writing exactly what I was saying. And examples are the best way to conclude that you're growing as we previously stated. Um, and I think um, I can say this from my also friend as well. He goes to LSU with me and his name's Christian, he did it differently with brainstorming. He would say, hey, these are some troubles I've been through and write them down. 
these are what I learned from them and write them down. If you can give yourself easier steps to produce an essay, please do. Because I know me, I think I believe I filled out what? 30 applications? Yeah, because all the UC schools are 15, CSU, there's eight. Like I filled out a lot of applications. And when you have steps to where you can just boom, that answer, boom, this example, it's a lot more easier and it goes a lot faster because these college applications are a long process. Definitely. Definitely touching definitely on everything Nat said, I completely agree. You know, it's honestly brainstorming is such an individual process. It's really about like how your mind thinks and what you want to show to the admissions officers. And that can look different for each and every individual. So, you know, the way you might do something is different than someone else might be. And that's okay. Just take your time and just have a clear idea of what you want to say. Um, so then we're going to talk about crafting the perfect essay. So now that you know what it is, now you know how to brainstorm, how can you put your brainstorming ideas onto paper? So the timeline that we usually write to write an essay is number one, plan and prepare. What prompt are you choosing? What story do you want to tell? Before you start writing, you should always choose a prompt. You know, you need to always have a box that you're going to fit all your words into. You never want to write a bunch and then put a box around it because then it's going to be a little bit more difficult. You want to choose at least two to three prompts and brainstorm for all of them and then pick one that you really felt like you had a lot of good information about and then write about that one. Organize your contents. What order does your story go in? How are you going to keep us engaged? You know, we don't want to hear like all the good stuff. And then we get to the end and we're like, oh, OK, this didn't hit at the end like I wanted it to. You want to make sure that you're writing it in a way that I want to keep reading. I want to keep seeing what's happening. Like, oh, my God, this happened to you. I want to see how you came out in the end. I want to see what happens writing the essay, what words will you use? Like we said, don't use a vocabulary that you don't have. If you're looking up synonyms on the internet, it's probably going to end up being that you use those words incorrectly or you don't use them in a way that makes sense. And, you know, we can always tell when reading through like, oh, I don't think this person fully knew what that word meant. And then what holds your story together? Is there like something that you're doing? Is there a type of writing that you're doing? Like some people use a lot of repetition. They use imagery words. They use sound words. They use things that keep people engaged that when they're reading, they know that this person is writing this. So what makes your writing style unique? How are you gonna include that in your personal statement? And then editing and revising. Proofread, peer response, proofread. It's a process. You spend, honestly, most of the time in your essay reworking it. Like, you'll write a first good draft and think, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is amazing. Have your mom read it. It won't be amazing. It will not be amazing. Like, I remember reading my personal statement to my family, and they were like, girl, you know that did not happen. And <laughs> they would be like, no, that is not, that does not sound good. And I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> I worked on that for six months. Like, definitely not. You want to say something about that? I will 100% agree with you. I thought I ate it up. And let me tell you guys also, because I, this will make me feel old. I'm about to turn 21. So I, I turned in my applications in 2021. So I was a COVID kid. So I got a lot more what is this? Sorry. I got a lot more um, leniency and for that, but I'm also telling you they're not giving as much leniency on COVID now because you guys were in middle school. They're thinking, hey, like you overcame that. But let me tell you and let me humble y'all a little bit. I gave it to my high school AP English teacher. Um, my um essay I got so many red marks I was like dang why well, should just delete the whole essay because <laughs> <laughs> I think that's also another thing is like um I know this might not talk about the essay but I still think like it is important is if you have a teacher or you have a good communication or a good relationship with the teacher please send that to them mm -hmm. sorry excuse me my phone keeps going off 
Um, please send that to them because you got to realize that they have the mentality of a professor or a teacher. They know what to look for. They know like, hey, this doesn't sound like grammatically correct or hey, this sounds too forced or hey, this doesn't sound like you at all. Or they'll tell you, hey, this is a better way to state this and that. Really using your village, there's a saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Really using your village to help you is a good thing. And I know that um, with everything going on nowadays, like people want to help people succeed in college. That's why I'm doing it. That's why Jade is doing this. I know probably that's why Christian is doing it is because we want to see everybody succeed. So don't stop yourself from succeeding because you might be scared of rebuttal or you might be told like, hey, this isn't good because that person just wants to see you do better and you got to take it as that. But I definitely will say, um, yeah, rewrite, rewrite, rewrite it again and look it over. Um, I know that chat GBT is a thing now. Y'all are lucky because I didn't have that. But um, definitely you can copy and paste your essay to you and say um, proofread and it will tell you all your errors that you have in that essay. But that's more so like grammatical and do not have chat GBT write your essays because... Let me tell you, those things look like I gave it to a seventh grader and told them, hey, here you go. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you are using your resources to help you with these essays um, because that's what's going to get you in because your spelling mistake might be the difference between me getting it and Christian getting it. And you, I know you guys are going to be upset if you have a mis small spelling mistake and you're like, dang, I knew not to put that there. So just using your also uh, surroundings to help you with your essays. Right. Definitely. Great advice. Um, so yeah, um, Christian and I are both, you know, rising sophomores. So we did this process um, a little under a year or so ago, you know, back in 2022, August, October, etc. So it was a little bit easier for us to find some of our personal statements and old supplementals. So we kind of have them on here so we can kind of like show you guys what worked for us. I mean, you know, got into our colleges. So I guess they worked to an extent. Um, so here's an, ex an excerpt from my personal statement. Um, I can read a little bit about it. So fear is a consuming feeling, one that takes no prisoners. I can vividly remember the first time I felt true, peer, true fear. Um, standing, walking in the French Quarter, I heard the hearty laugh of my boyfriend beside me. The humid air stuck to my skin and beads of sweat trickled down my neck. Despite the heat, I was nothing but joyful. My joy lasted until the sound of the first bullet. Crack. The smile wiped off my face almost as fast as the bullet zipped through the air. Crack. My mind took me to my safe place. My body went on autopilot. Crack, crack. You're okay. You're standing off the edge of the levee, listening to the murky Mississippi River. Crack, crack, crack. You're okay. You're standing off Charles screaming, throw me something, mister. Crack, crack, silence. So one thing that I wanted to really do when I was writing my personal statement is I chose the one that was like uh, describe like your identity through um, like a story or something that's basically happened to you. I think it was like the first prompt um, that was offered at the time on Common App. So when I thought about my identity, first thing I thought to myself is I'm from New Orleans, a city that everybody always wants to go to. Everybody knows us from being like a really happy, vibrant place where Mardi Gras is their food is great and everything is always great but as someone who's lived in New Orleans all my life I knew that that wasn't true like it is a great place it's a beautiful place but we also have pretty high crime rates we have people that get carjacked we have elderlies that are being injured on a day-to-day -day basis and that's really sad so I wanted to kind of explore my identity through living in New Orleans. So I talked about something that happened to me a few years ago when I was walking out with my friend. We witnessed a shooting that happened like maybe not even a block away. Like we're talking off the same street. And it was really scary because I had never been that close to gun violence before. And the moment absolutely just changed the way that I thought about everything around me. I started to see the bad things that were being covered up. I started to see how there's not a lot of people who are talking about these issues. And it really changed how I felt 
about living in New Orleans and what I consider myself to be as a New Orleanian. And kind of how we talked about the structure. I'm a very creative writer. I used to do creative writing. That was like my major when I first came into college. So I wanted that to show, I, I wanted my writing style to show. I'm a very like imagery focused person, you know? So like you could see that with the whole like crack, crack, crack and the, the just like, you know, the detailing of like the sweat down my neck, the air outside. And I thought that this was like a killer entrance. Like I thought that I really ate this up. And so now that I'm like a different writer, there are so many things that I would change about this, but it worked for me when I was 17 and that's all that matters. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what we say when we're talking about like be descriptive and you know how as soon as I start my essay, I introduce my story. Like I don't waste no time. I don't say, hi, my name is Jaden. I'm from New Orleans. I get straight into the moment that it happened. I'm like, hey, I'm walking down the street. Boom, boom, boom. This is what happens. Boom, boom, boom. And it's like, that's how you need to start your essays because you don't have a lot of time. As soon as you start writing, you're already 100 words in. And, you know, with those first 100 words, you need to tell them what your story is. You need to tell them what you're going to be talking about. You need to tell them kind of a little bit about how it changed you and what made you like what experience caused you to think like this. So this is kind of what I took. But as you, we're going to see next Christians and kind of show a little bit about how someone else might take a different prompt or the same prompt and kind of write about it in a different way. So I'm going to pass it off to Christian and we can read his. All right. Um, this is kind of lengthy. Sorry. This I think this is like the ending of mine. But um, just for a little context before I read it, I kind of now that I have I'm a little bit more educated on journalism, this is like a feature story. And my anecdotal lead was like me starting at a computer I had when I was like, well, that my family had when I was like 10 or something. It was like a really bad, slow computer, but that's just what I started with. So yeah, it was like me and my siblings are fighting over the computer. That was the antidote to lead to that. But um, I read it now. My siblings and I were thrilled to own a computer. I knew she bought the computer because she needed it, although she proclaimed it was for everyone. We would bicker and quarrel about petty topics like who would get to play cool math first. Although my mother repeatedly told us not to use it, there was no complaint when we did, and we always did. It brought us joy and enabled us to see things beyond what we had, and it served my mother the same purpose. Instead of napping, she looked beyond the present situation and committed to what she wanted for her children's future. After earning her bachelor's degree, she joined an occupational and speech therapy clinic as an office manager. In 2018, she earned her master's degree and began working in a family medical practice as the site manager. I wish I had recognized the importance of what she was doing earlier on. I would have been more considerate. Despite the fun of getting a good computer at the time, it was seeing my mother diligently complete hours of schoolwork every day that I am most grateful for. It instilled diligence and determination in me. My mother endured years of extraneous stress to provide more for her children. As a result of the support, love, and opportunities she has provided, I feel obligated to succeed. I aspire to do as much as I can within the span of my time here. Every opportunity, no matter how big or small, receives my greatest effort. I can proudly say that I took full advantage of what was available in my community. I took the initiative and became a leader within my school and academics. Achievement does not come without hard work, and I pledge to continue working hard. Although getting up from that computer was not fun, it taught me even more valuable lessons. It would, ne ooh. <laughs> it would have never occurred to me that a computer would change my life so dramatically, but it did. Basically, I wrote the um my personal statement just about seeing like my mama, because my mother is a teen mom, so I wrote it about just her. She was a teen single mother. I just, yeah. So um, I was like seeing her kind of grow up to an extent. Like I saw her get her full education. I saw her like from working as a maid to like literally getting her bachelor's degree, getting her master's degree. So I just saw that transition within her life. And I'm like watching her be at that computer every day while she was still coming home from like work and then having to take care of like me and my siblings. I'm like, that's crazy. I'm like, they actually really taught me a lot and gave me like a worth it a work ethic that I have like employed without my life. So I really just wanted to show um, the type of work ethic I would um, bring to my university. And I also kind of want, I didn't speak too directly to this, but with um, with the computer of like showing me the outside world, that kind of represented to um, 
it just contextualized where I'm from because I'm from a really small town, South Carolina. Unlike New Orleans, nobody knows where I'm from. So I really wanted to paint a little picture. So I kind of mentioned in my essay about how um, the computer showed me, um, what I'm not sure what exactly I said, but the computer just, you know, it gave me access to the broader world. So um, yeah, and I'm like, considering, I mean, looking back, I was being very dramatic. I felt like I wasn't doing enough compared to my peers. Cause I'm like, oh, not too many things were like available to me in my community. So I really wanted to showcase that, like hint to that in my essay. And I did, but looking back, I'm like, I did enough. <laughs> and also kind of, I shared the um, same sentiments as Jade. And like, looking back, I'm like, okay, some of the stuff you said, you could have really cut that out. Like, that's a problem I always had. The, my essay was not that concise. And I won't lie. I actually never let anyone read my essay because I felt like it was too personal. <laughs> so y'all right now, y'all the only people who have ever seen my essay besides the admissions counselor. So yeah, that is not good advice. So don't take that. But I felt like it was too personal at the time. And maybe I would have gotten to some more colleges if I let someone else read it. But hey, we're here now. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, great sentiments from Christian. <laughs> definitely don't hold your personal statement hostage, guys. <laughs> Cause like some people are gonna read it. So, you know, don't yeah, be afraid. <laughs> Do you need to share it with your mom? If she's in the story, like No, because I'm like, I know she would have cried. So I'm like, no, she has never <laughs> seen it to this day. No. Definitely. <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, see, like this is an example of like two different prompts or two different things. And it's like the way you can write about it can be so different. Like you don't need to use imagery. You don't need to use like words that are big. You could just be simple, tell a little story and it could still portray so much about who you are. Um, so I think um, Nat has um, like something she wants to share about her personal statement as well. So if you want to just like kind of touch on yours a little bit, I know we don't have it like copied on the screen. Oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. fine. So I took, I am, what is going on? <laughs> I don't know what's going on in my background, but um, I took a little bit different route than you guys did. So this is kind of showing like the flexibility of your personal statements. I am a type of person who likes writing poetry more so. Jaden, how do I get to, to stop? <laughs> I don't know why I keep showing the. Okay, y'all just don't mind that. But uh, I took a more uh, imagery statement than anything on mine because one of the things I can do that for the future, I can pull people with my emotions. I can relate to them very well. So I'm going to read mine really quickly, like just the first sentence the first paragraph and the last paragraph I dreamed of coming back to home a home is a place where the screams are so loud and yet the crack of a heart is even louder yet we call it home what is a home the two-sided knife I don't want me in danger but as far as away from you the smell of dinner of cooking hits but for one or served for two it's a burden, but an obligation home to a family of a mom or a dad or an uncle or an aunt. Yet one of those, I only know mine are not, mine are not given to me. Mine were chose by me. It's engulfed in their tongues like a serpent. Venom is so much more powerful, straight to a heart and antidote that you have to find within yourself. That was my first conclusion. Like that was my first grabber. Cause I always tell people grab somebody with the hook. You, I know like hearing it, you're like, what is she talking about? What is, what is that? Like, what's the two-sided knife? What is that about the home? Like, you know, it's something about my home life because you don't know what it is. So you keep reading. That's what you want them to do. You want them to keep reading because if you can grab somebody into a story, you got them hooked because they're going to want to know what does that mean? And my last question, my last um, conclusion was, I was a child given up at three, not knowing what the understanding of adoption was. I had shoes all slightly too big for me, but I had a dream that clouded up my brain like no other. I always had questions, but never answers from where I looked like to where I'm from. But I knew at the end of the day, I was a black person with black hair, brown eyes, and that's all the world saw me as. But in my eyes, in my adopted parents' eyes, I was their future, not some kid who was given up, not someone whose mom left them, and not somebody's dad who was in jail. I was, 
I was stronger than the steel bars that my dad was behind. And I was stronger than any drug that my mom could take. So that just how powerful that first paragraph is. That conclusion paragraph is the boom. You want to snap it. You want to tell them, hey, once again, this is what I went through. This is what I came through. And this is where I am now. My um, personal statement was more so about what's a struggle that you went through that most people can't say that they went through. And mine was an adoption process. And I kind of spoke on it a little bit. It was about more so questioning where I came from or that understanding of what it's been through. Um, there is a lot that you can say in a personal statement, but I will say this, if you are going for emotional appeal, not don't exaggerate it, but draw it out from your heart. Because as Jenin said, if I was reading something about adoption and I know about it, and I look at something that you guys are writing, I'm like, that's not true. You don't want to do that. Or if you like scraped your knee and you said like, I, I scraped my knee in the rest of my life. No, you want something that somebody else can't pull from. Just how Jaden said that she pulled from New Orleans. And let me tell you, I've been to New Orleans a couple of times. I'm an hour and a, I'm an hour away. That is not something that everybody's been through. And just how Christian said, being a his mom being a teen mom, that's not everything that they can go through. You want to pull something that somebody else can't necessarily say that they've gone through. Yes, of course, people will go through similar things, but that's not your story. Saying like, oh, you hurt your leg or yeah, some people have done that in sports, but you want to say how that concluded you to do better. And I think just wrapping that whole like personal statement up is you need your conclusion paragraph to be as strong as your hook because you're tying the knot. You're opening up the box on your um, opening paragraph and you're wrapping it up and tying a bow at the end. So please make sure, and I will say that again, Christian, I will tell you the only person that read my essay was my mother and my college. Um, the reason why that was, was because some of the personal statements like, are going to be a little touchy feeling like I did have my English teacher read my other essays but in terms of personal essays it is up to you if you want everybody to read it some people to read it it's up to you and your comfortability but also realize this like sometimes it's okay to be vulnerable in these statements it's okay to be like hey let me like I give you an example I um, lost one of my friends to suicide during college and I had to apply for an internship. They're like, what's something that puts you in a dark place that you overcome? I wrote all about that. And that was hard for me to write about, but I also understood that that event made me who I was. So taking claim of that power of your future, of your past, that is something you have to show in these personal statements. Definitely. Totally. Everything that she said, we definitely agree with. Like, sometimes you have to write about um, vulnerable things that you've, you know, healed or are healing from. Because honestly, that's, that's authentic. That's authentic. That's real. And that is a true story, you know, and like, like she said, it's like there's common things that happen. Like we, there are people who live in dangerous cities. There's people who have teen moms. There's people who have been adopted, but there is a story that you uniquely have regarding those things, you know, like there's a way that it was different from, for you than it was somebody else. And that is what they're looking for. That's why you should be specific. You should be using descriptive terms and words because you want to separate like why is your your story different than someone else's and how did it change you differently than it might have changed someone else so that's the personal statement like we said that's supposed to convey a lot of values and personal information so now let's get into uh the supplements so kind of like reiterating a supplement is used to provide some more information outside of the ones that you've already shared in your application. So this is the college directly asking you like, tell us about this or tell us about this in like 250 words or less. So I applied to college via QuestBridge. 
QuestBridge is this application that has like 50 college partners and you can use your application to apply for like all of those colleges and you have the chance of getting a full ride if matched with a college and if not you still have an opportunity to get in regular decision. So the prompt I believe for this one was just talk about like a, an everyday experience uh, or like some everyday like what's your everyday routine or something that is a challenge or etc. And I chose to talk about like a challenge that I had in my job. Um, so I'll kind of read it again, like per plonk. The sound of creamy tan sauce hitting a steel table was no mystery to my ears. Many days had I spent hunched over in agony as my arms ached to pump copious amounts of cane sauce. Cane sauce, the pride of raising cane's chicken fingers, always added a tangy with a little bit of spice flavor to my days. Though one particular day, Bearing through the ache in my arms was not my greatest feat. Splat. The sound of the beast croak reverberated down my spine. Oh no, the unfortunate time for cleaning had finally come upon me. Despite two years on the job, I still had not mastered the act of cleaning and reassembling the beast. Yet I was determined to conquer. So after 20 minutes of dishwater soaked clothes and grimy sauced hands, I beheld my coveted prize. I, Jade Armand, builder of sauce pumps, had finally earned my title. Not only had I persisted, persisted for so long attempting to build a sauce pump, I had endured months of watching others build it and hoping that one day I could too. Luckily, I did. So with this one, I wanted to be funny. I wanted to use metaphors. I wanted it to, I wanted to turn an everyday occurrence in my life to some like medieval myth. And that's kind of what I did. I introduced it. I talk about the fact that, hey, I'm working at my job. You know, I'm a part-time worker and a student. I'm working at my job. And this is a battle that I have at my job that is not like a big battle, but it's like more of like a funny battle. And it's the fact that I could not put together that sauce pump for the life of me, y'all. I worked at Cane's for four years at the end, and I still to this day couldn't put that sauce pump together. So I wanted to kind of humorize an everyday experience for me that also kind of showed that I persevere, I'm determined, and I hard work and I try and try to do something it's like get it and so you know it's a little bit of funny because I'm comparing like a sauce machine to like a beast and I'm using a lot of descriptive language like clerk punk slat like it's just I, I want you to feel like you're there with me while I'm pumping the sauce and I think that it's like this is a really good like descriptive funny humorous but also reveals a lot about who I am as a person I'm a hard worker, I'm funny, I'm humorous, and I wanted all that to be shown. And so, yeah, I applied with this and I got into some of the QuestBridge schools. So I was definitely very happy that I had the opportunity. So I that, think- That pump, Jaden, let me tell you, <laughs> I work at Keynes, bro. I work there uh, for eight months, let me tell you. Y'all, y'all don't understand. There's, I just gave up, I just, he go. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, manager, manager, <laughs> like, because I can't. So I think Christian also um, included one of his. So he's going to go ahead and talk a little bit about his supplemental. All right. So um, this one is for the Howard University application. Um, I think specifically for the business one. Um, and basically, I just, looking back, I'm like, I could have chose a different topic. Because seeing as it's an HBC, HBCU, I'm like, that's a little obvious, but I do like it. I, I I took it to like a very informational like background with the um supplemental. So it's still good, but I definitely have critiques looking back, but I'm just going to read it. In an article for Shroom, Lisa Rope concluded that Black individuals make up 13% of the U.S. population, but account for only 8% of employees in professional roles. Black professionals hold only 3.2% of all executive or senior leadership roles and less than 1% of all Fortune 500 CEO positions. This is the problem. The private sector is an integral part of the economy and therefore the country. The lack of Black representation in this field, especially in the 2020s, is concerning. Since learning about the disparity of racial representation in business, I have been intrigued and curious to pursue it. Further research made me appreciate the wide range of subspecialties in business. Business has a place for everyone to contribute their views, creativity, and talents. Why should I not participate? If I attempt to combat the lack of Black business professionals, 
professionals and executives, why would I not start my journey at the holy grail of Black business, Howard University? Howard provides both the necessary resources and quality education I desire to succeed in business and also a welcoming, relatable community for me to flourish in. The opportunity to receive an education from Black professionals, those of whom I aspire to be like, while alongside other future Black professionals, is an invaluable experience. So this is kind of like um, a why the university type of um, supplemental. So yeah, I was basically just kind of saying, um, I really want to kind of ease the gap in Black representation in business. Um, and then also kind of um, just saying how I thought Howard would be a great place for me to do that, because like I say, it's, a, it's the holy grail of Black business. Um, I think it actually... I think they have the most black, um, black business graduates like in the country, I believe. So there's that. Then also like the it's a black community. If you want to learn, if you want to like have an impact on like black people in business, um, that among your peers who would also be other black business people, I think that's just a great place for um to do that. So um yeah. Definitely great, great stuff, Christian. Like <laughs> That is a funny topic that you choose to write about, though. Yeah, I'm like, uh, uh -huh. I'm like, kind of everybody, I think that's why everybody would apply. Right, but like, I, <laughs> I, I want to go yeah. to the Black school. <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? I think I did recycle this for other universities, though. Like, I think I might have used this for Stern. So there's that. I just maybe should not have used this for Howard, but... When I used for my PWIs, like Northwestern and NYU, they mm -hmm. got me to go to school. So. Oh, yeah. Definitely yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, you know how it feels to play that card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's probably like you and everybody else, Christian. Right. <laughs> but, but hey, I, I, I mean. Yeah, I'm right. about to say fam, you too. Like, I feel like a lot of. I would say I would say so so with this because I feel like you could use it for like fam, you too. I just feel like Howard's like the. Of the anyway, yeah. HB. Hey, it it worked. It worked. So <laughs> right, definitely, but a great. Um, so yeah, and then last up, we're gonna have a breakout room activity for all of our live participants. So I'm gonna go ahead and share this little breakout exercise. You can also just like kind of work on this on your own time as well. But um, uh, it's the rough outline of an essay, brainstorm a prompt choose an antidote, plan and outline it, and then you'll have an opportunity to share it with the speakers and et cetera on the call. So um, let me go ahead and stop the recording for now and I'll come back at the conclusion. Definitely, like if all any of the speakers have any parting words. Um, yeah, just thank y'all for watching. And um, I didn't get to say it, but um, I was just gonna say, I think Nafima, I think you're in a really good place with writing your essay. So I think just really hone in on all the um ideas you may have. I think you're really, I think you're really good. And NYU is a great school. We have a lot of, we have a lot of African representation. If you want to come here, so feel free. <laughs> Definitely. Thank yeah. you. Um, really appreciate everyone who attended. And thanks.